We have designated the month of July as Compassion Month here at Open Door Baptist Church. Compassion International is a ministry that we'll be partnering with to help reach children around the world, uh, not only with food and clothing and shelter, but uh, primarily to reach them with the gospel. Every day, the statistics tell us that 26,000 children die of preventable causes. 26,000 children who need food or medicine or something to save their life. And at Open Door Baptist, our goal is to be a part of reaching 100 of these children and touching their life and bringing life-saving relief to them. So we're partnering with uh, Compassion International to reach these children around the world, and we're asking you to be a part of this. As you know, we're going to use our designated missions giving. We give 11% of all general of all funds given to the general operating fund for missions, and so we're going to use this to help provide food, shelter, and clothing to these children. Again, our goal as a church is to reach 100 of these children, to touch 100 of these lives and bring relief to them. So we're excited today to have one of these children with us, uh, Ben Mwangi, who grew up in Nairobi, Kenya. He's coming to share with us today. Also with Ben, we have uh, Karen Spencer, and her husband and daughter have traveled down from Tennessee to be with us today. Also, we have Lloyd and Michelle Baker, who are local uh, compassion advocates here in the Tuscaloosa area, and their daughter Allie is also with them. And Carl and Leslie Wiggins are working here at Open Door Baptist as members of our church to help coordinate uh, the ministry to compassion. So we thank uh, Carl and Leslie very much today. But Ben Mwangi from Nairobi is here, and we're excited to have him share with us his experiences. And uh, Ben, you come share with us now. Hello. All right. So, where I come from in Africa, we usually practice Psalms 100. And this is how we celebrate Psalms 100. As David say that, shout to the Lord. Give a joyous voice and just shout to the Lord. And this is how we do it. When I say praise the Lord, everybody from the crowd answers back by saying, Amen. All right? So, praise the Lord. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, because, you know, like David also spoke in uh, Psalms 84, verse 10, it is better to be in the house of the Lord for only a single day than be anywhere else for a thousand years. So, when you come to the house of the Lord, this is the place to belong. This is the place where you're comforted. This is the place where you're fed spiritually. And this is the place where you meet uh, your friends, you meet everyone and share whatever, we are, whatever is going on in our lives. And that's why Paul spoke and said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, do not be drunk by wine. Have you read that? Do not be drunk by wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And then he says, encourage one another in hymns, psalms. Amen? Amen. And the only place we can do that is here. It's not in a bar somewhere they are drinking and partying, but this is the place where we can encourage one another in hymns and psalms. Praise the Lord. So, uh, uh, my name is Ben Mwangi. I, I, I guess I went too fast, and I was told in the South, you go slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my name is Ben Mwangi, and uh, I was born in Nairobi, Kenya in the slums of Korogocho, and uh, just coming to the U.S. and seeing the transition is, this is like a big blow to my life and also to most of my friends. One of my best friends, his name is Richmond. When you ask him, where have you been in the U.S., he always say, I've been in the U.S. and Texas. I don't know why he takes Texas to be unique and different from the whole of the U.S. <laughs> But he always says, I've been to the U.S. and Texas. But for me, I've been to the U.S. and to the South. <laughs> because I've seen the life all the way from Texas, uh, Tennessee, coming all the way to Alabama, Georgia. Life is the same, slow. <laughs> but 
I'm not here to talk about that, but I'm here to talk about basically my life and my, my work generally as I was growing up. I was born 25 years ago by a mom who was, uh, I will say, she used to sell alcohol, illegal alcohol. And I, we used to live in the slums. What are you seeing on the slideshow? That's the slums of Korogocho. And so my mom, it was illegal Ill, or illicit brew because as you all know, we also have illicit brew in the US. They call it moonshine, right? <laughs> so we, in Kenya also they do that and my mom used to brew alcohol. And we, it wasn't even enough to feed us or to, to make us be able to eat three meals a day and so we had to, to forego some meals and probably have one meal or two meal by God's grace. And so that was my life. I didn't have money, like my mom didn't have money to take me to school. She didn't have money to buy me school uniform. She didn't have money to take me, uh, you know, to a Walmart <laughs> to, to go and buy, you know, and be just like an like American kid. But I really appreciated because I lived in Korogocho, but as I was growing up, it was a big blow for my life because basically Korogocho means trash. The word Korogocho means trash. And so as I was growing up, I felt I was trash. My self-esteem was too low because I'm living in trash. I might end up getting married in trash, dying in trash, and be buried in trash. And so the nature and nature controversy of trash was within me. It was fighting within me. I want to come out of this trash, but the environment, the nature is telling me, you cannot go anywhere farther than this. This is where your dream is. And so I had given up everything. My dad was a casual worker. He didn't have a good job that he could feed us or do anything in terms of giving us the best. He didn't have a job. And so we lived in the slums. And that's all I knew for all my life as I was growing up. And Korogocho, for your information, we all live in good, we all live in good houses in a 2,500 2, square feet. In Korogocho, we have one square mile with residents of over 150,000 people. There are no latrines. There's no sewerage system. Only, all, all there is is what we call uh, the, there's a latrine, uh, I'm, I'm pointing out to the bathroom you can see the bathroom stroke restroom. That's the bathroom, that's the restroom. And so when you help yourself, everything flows into the river. So we don't have a drainage system for the sewer. So then the river becomes our drainage system, okay? And you find so many kids, like me as I was growing up, I didn't have shoes. We walk, we run, we play in that sewer or in that dirty water and the consequences were we all get diseases. We all know waterborne diseases like dysentery, bilharzion, amoebic dysentery. And so as a result of that sewerage flowing and being stagnant, we ended up having mosquitoes brooding in the neighborhoods. And what are the consequences of mosquitoes? We get malaria. And malaria is number one killer disease in the world. Let's not talk about HIV AIDS. That's not number one killer. Number one killer is malaria. I've, I, I, I myself have suffered malaria several times and by the grace of God, I've overcome it. It's not a good disease because if a, a full grown person feels 